that's very close to myself uh, to raise hearts. And I hope uh, uh, you've heard about composable e-commerce already and you are uh, dying to hear some more news and also how Adobe views composable e-commerce. So uh, first of all, quick introduction other than what Maris shared. Uh, I'm responsible for commerce strategy across the EMEA region. So I work with a lot of customers in uh, countries in, the, in Europe, Middle East and Africa, uh, helping them set up their e-commerce strategy rather than just the e-commerce technologies. And as such, I may have worked with uh, some of you already. And with me is Ray Borgman, as Mara has already mentioned. Uh, Ray, perhaps you'd like to do a qu very quick intro of yourself as well before we get stuck in. Yeah, thanks, Marion. Hello, everybody there. I just want to make sure before I go and continue is that the slides are working. I don't see them visualized in my deck, but I just want to confirm that everything is visualized on the other end. I Can see the Marianne? screen perfectly. Mar okay, uh, that's great. lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Well, first of all, thanks um, for this great event, organizing this for the Magento um, community. Uh, much appreciated, taking all the effort, getting everybody together and thrilled about this. So a small introduction for those who are, never heard about me. So my name is Ray Bachman. I'm a senior global software support manager for the Adobe Commerce Cloud support engineering team. And my focus is making sure that we are delivering the best product and support in the market to our customers. I've been, as, as I mentioned before, a, a big part of the Magento community already. Uh, I started in the early beta phase in 2008 and supporting the product since for the last 14 years already. You know, how can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> it's a, it's long, a long time. time. <laughs> yeah. So Ray and I are going to walk you through a, a few topics today around composable e-commerce, in particularly the four topics that are shared here. Um, It'll take about 20, 25 minutes. Please feel free to put any questions you have during our conversation in the chat. If we can't answer them during the presentation, we're happy to do so uh, afterwards. But first of all, so composable commerce, it is a marketing buzzword. Um, it's a concept and we're going to walk you through uh, all of those aspects. What is composable commerce and where does it actually stem from? Secondly, what clients might already have that's considered composable? Because as I said, a buzzword doesn't mean anything without the underlying context. So we'll walk you through those aspects that's uh, out there that you or your clients already have that are composable. Thirdly, how this can help customers or your organization's e-commerce. And last but not least, how a flexible approach can actually help speed up innovation. So at the end of our session, you should have a clearer understanding of what composable really means and specifically what it doesn't mean and what the key elements are that take up, make up this approach. And finally, how it can have a very positive impact uh, on organizations. So Ray, let's get stuck in. Composable e-commerce, as I mentioned, it's very much a marketing term and a buzzword. I've heard customers mention it a ton of times now. Uh, people are still a little confused about what it truly means. So where did it come from? And could you offer us a very quick uh, definition perhaps? Yes, Marianne, of course. Well, really, as you already mentioned, it, it's a marketing term, you know, that has been launched to describe a series of elements that has been out there for some time already. And as far as the definition goes, composable commerce is a development approach of selecting best of brief commerce elements and combining or composing them into a custom application build for specific business needs. Great, I'll always love starting with a definition. It gives a little bit of color to, uh, to a term. So that makes it a lot clearer already. Thank you for that. So these elements that you mentioned aren't necessarily new, right? For companies like Adobe, but they're being brought together to define best of breed, extensibility, and the ability to seamlessly plug in. So let's jump to another thing that every single customer always asks me. Can you explain what the advantages are of this new concept, composable e-commerce? Or perhaps in Adobe speak, we should call it modular commerce. Yes, certainly, Marian. Um, well, some of the advantages of having individual services, uh, and, and I can summarize that, that that's, first of all, continuous uh, deployment, 
uh, rapid release of new features. I think that's really important. Uh, independently scalable, I think everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the flexible, ready to use products. And, and most of all, I think everybody agrees with me, you know, lower cost of ownership. Yeah, all great things. Uh, we'll talk more about these uh, in a minute. But then another question that I get a lot, uh, the term Mac or Mac Alliance, what does it actually stand for and how does it relate to what we call modular commerce? Yeah, it, it's a really um, more common term that has been out there on the internet for some time right now. If, if we uh, look at the term itself or the acronym, the acronym itself stands for the M stands for microservice, A for API, C for cloud, and the H for headless. But again, you know, it's just a term that was invented to describe mm. a set of existing technology principles and bring it together in a single architecture. Well, Adobe has bringing these and more to the market separately uh, since actually Magento 1. This may come mm -hmm. as a surprise. So uh, it's not actually all new to humanity. And in general, it's all about creating the best customer experience for our clients. But you know what is more important than the term itself, and I always mentioned it, is how clients can use these different components. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, so, you know, touching on that. So how does the combination of these different principles impact customer businesses? What's Adobe's point of view on that? Um, well, there will be a more increase of collaboration across technical and business teams, of course. Uh, it, it's more important than ever now to align on what modular commerce can bring to your business and most important, how to apply best practices on using it. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's so true. So uh, perhaps we could take some time now, Ray, and walk through the individual components one by one. Um, let's talk about microservices, first of all. Can you share a bit about what that really means and why they matter to organizations uh, such as our clients? Yeah, yeah, I certainly can. Well, I mean, as a definition going back, a microservice that's actually an individual piece of business functionality that are independently developed, deployed, and managed. It, it's like breaking up an application into a smaller collection of loosely coupled services. And for instance, search, product recommendation, prices, catalog, content, checkout, or even cards. Those can be modules that Adobe will make available. Great. And, and what are the benefits? What are the key benefits of using microservices for a business? Yeah, benefits, I think that's the, the thing what we wanted to hear, you know, uh, using mm -hmm. a microservice would eventually lead to, uh, well, just name them, uh, rapid development, deployment and releases uh, that will have a tremendous impact on time to market. Um, I guess important for everybody. And the flexible uh, scaling of services, uh, Example, you know, if, if there's any high load throughout Black Friday, Summer Monday, that's really crucial. Uh, coming back to the reduce of total cost of ownership, TCO, if there's less to no development work in Evolve and the services are packaged as a default offering with a general license, that's really flexible to just speed up and, and get them up, up and running. And, and to wrap up, uh, best of breed, accessibility, and seamlessly combining different services. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Marion, uh, let's be careful as well. You know, it's not necessarily meant for everybody. You know, uh, and I would guess we need to discuss carefully what kind of business needs are and how to address those. Adobe has working, has been working for quite some time now. And, and we always can advise on kind of best practices and architectural needs that suits the business for those specific clients. Yeah, so I love the idea of flexibility and, of course, a fast deployment that this could offer uh, with speed of plugging in new services as and when you want to. And, and the question arises for me, if I'm thinking about it, would any or even every company um, jump in and start using microservices full on from day one? Or could you actually start a little bit smaller, perhaps, and, and test the waters, so to speak? Yeah, that's, that's, again, a really good one. Well, actually, Adobe's point of view is to review which component uh, and yeah. service could be best replaced 
with a microservices at first. For example, you know, would it be catalog pricing or catalog or search for that matter? You know, think of this as a core service that really would benefit your organization and would lower down the overall total cost of ownership and increase the overall success ratio of your business. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much for explaining uh, microservices. I'm definitely it's something to be excited about. Um, next up in our series is the APIs. Well, everybody, I think, has heard of APIs, but why is the combination of microservices and API first so important for companies in the future? Well, Marion, the definition of the API, I'm just going to share it again with the audience, I guess. Uh, although everybody probably knows, you know, the application interface it, it's a connection between computers and computer programs. It's, it's a type of software interface offering a service to another piece of software. And these APIs connect the front end to the back end to really keep it simple. Most modern type of APIs are being used within the Adobe product stack, uh, also known as GraphQL APIs. And, and they're supporting the gRPC framework to transport this. The actual business impact for that matter, using it is flexibility, simplification, accelerated time to market and scalability. So really what you're saying is that the use of APIs will increase the speed in terms of time to market. That's the, the, the overall underlying benefit of API first. Exactly. So the next piece of the puzzle, uh, I would say in this would be cloud. You know, mm -hmm. all of this combined, I guess we need to host this somewhere. So the cloud actually, you know, creates a scalability, flexibility, and decreases the overhead. And having those microservices and host them on the cloud, they really go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start, for instance, with one component as a, as a quick starter and add another one later. Uh, and, uh, and we've seen, of course, many clients out there, many merchants, they're already leveraging that, uh, also called as the AC model, the API cloud model. Yes, yeah, super. And that, that makes total sense. So that leaves us with one last one to cover in terms of the modules that we mentioned. Can we take a minute and talk about headless as well and headless components? Where does that sit in the mix that we're discussing right now? That's a good one. Well, Marion, the definition of headless, uh, it's a single decoupled backend that encapsulates all business logic and processes required to process the common set of common services via performant flexible commerce API layer that enables a range of customer touch points, also known as the hats. Well, headless commerce has multiple angles. Uh, we can use it uh, for multiple front ends versus back end. Uh, PWA, a progressive web app, that's a good example of a front end uh, that could be used, for instance, as a sales channel. But Headless can also be used for other solutions. Um, for that matter, kiosk or point of sales in stores. So a Headless can be used everywhere you please. And each Headless service is consumed via its own APIs, referring back to the API uh, definition, of course. So uh, expanding the use of a headless front end like PWA Studio or, for instance, the Adobe Experience Manager, also known as AEM, can be a really easy next step. And to close that loop by adding that specific microservice or microservices uh, where needed, you complete the idea of a total modular concept. Yeah, super. That, that really does make sense. And I'm bringing these sort of known concepts together in modular commerce does does make a lot of sense and I can see the benefits <laughs> there. I'd love to bring this to life for our audience a little bit further. If I'm correct, many clients have already started using the different components of this modular uh, concept and modular commerce as well. Can you perhaps share a case study of one of the customers that you've uh, been working with? Yeah, I definitely certainly can. Uh, you're correct. You know, we see more and more clients moving into this modular commerce and uh, to sell their products on a global level while using a flexible and scalable best in class e-commerce solution. Um, the main use uh, we commonly see is that clients implement Adobe Commerce using the latest PWA Studio. Uh, but other solutions, other headless solutions like third party or bespoke can also be used. 
And PWAs to do for that matter, that's a front end system that can be served both on B2C and B2B on a multi-domain or any local language. And of course, with Adobe Commerce uh, as its solid uh, backend system. Um, and actually with the help of Adobe Consulting Services, we can support building a global reference architecture, also known as GRA, that can be scalable easily and flexible to maintain on a global level. And we will use the overall TCO, total cost of ownership. But very simply put, that specific GRA model, actually that's a really thin, lightweight uh, base layer, uh, having Adobe Commerce as its core, of course, and on top of that, we just added a global, for instance, with HP, a global HP uh, custom code uh, specific. And the icing on the cake uh, are the specific country specific needs. Um, and the funny thing is sometimes we call this GRA model uh, a three layer cake. <laughs> I always think of it as a, as a wedding cake, actually, right? So we have course for celebration and they work tightly together for the future, right? So... If I can summarize, using a global reference architecture uh, built on a modular front end, it's really there to ensure there's flexibility, extensibility, easy deployments globally, and a faster time to market where necessary, when necessary. Is that a good summary? And you nailed it. That's really, I think it's a really good summary. Yes, it does. You know, using this model, uh, it, it's much easier to scale and maintain. Uh, flexibility, I guess, is crucial for our customers. Yeah, super. It's it's all very interesting. Um, so are there other technologies that customers should be aware of while they're reshaping their architecture for the future? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, mm -hmm. we may see many customers battling with the challenges of growth. Uh, I think that's a common thing, you know, uh, how much can my current platform hold? What's the maximum mm -hmm. uh, amount of orders uh, on our customers? Uh, and is my overall user experience up to par? You know, these are all important questions we get day by day. That's why Adobe has been listing and working hard to build a solution, actually multiple solution that fits our clients needs best. As we speak, we are onboarding some alpha clients and partners uh, onto our new next-gen cloud offering. This, this uh, next-gen cloud offering, the platform itself, will be provided by AWS Cloud Native Services. For example, AWS Aurora, Elastic Cash, Amazon MQ, and much more, just to make sure we have the maximum and the flexible scaling to serve our merchants. And within that platform, Adobe offers the option to add those microservices we are talking about with just a click of a button, more or less, you know? Uh, and mm -hmm. to keep in mind, uh, Adobe already offers uh, many solutions out there. They are ready to use already, you know, payment, product recommendation, live search, app builder. These are great plug and play, microservices SaaS solutions ready to go. Of course, you know, some custom work may be needed, but that can be left at a minimum. And easy onboarding, that's of course key to maximize value. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, let's not forget that some of the services Adobe offers are in fact also AI-based, artificial intelligence-based also, really helping drive that true customer experience. So let's have a look for a minute at the organization's side of things. The new platform and services, will that have a positive impact also on the organization itself? Does it, for instance, reduce the need for specialized people and teams uh, that they require in order to, to run with Adobe Commerce? Yes, you're correct. You know, with this new platform, we reduce the complexity. And, and let the technology speak for itself. This way, developers and business people can truly focus on their business needs. The second question, it's a little bit harder to find. You know, back in the day, the monolith required one group of specialized people to manage this. Now, there are more different technologies to support. So a different kind of mm. specialism is needed, of course. And, and a wider variety, a variety of skills, that will be good in all cases. 
Yeah, I agreed. Um, so a different different skill sets are needed, perhaps for different technologies, but still um, the, the ease of use will definitely have an impact. And then the next question would be about timelines, right? So what if a company prefers to wait until other companies have gone before them, have ironed out issues that this whole, you know, composable or modular commerce concept has been ironed out. I mean, there's a lot of companies that are, you know, feel they're doing well enough. They don't necessarily want to rock the boat. Um, so what do you think? Can they wait or should they get started today? Uh, well, of course, you know, it, it makes sense. Uh, but you cannot wait forever, Marion. You know, modern technology mm -hmm. are around us all the time. Uh, and a funny story, maybe uh, back in 2009, uh, when I started, of course, uh, with Magento, we started with Headless, connecting a CMS named Joomla to Magento. Maybe it was a little bit too <laughs> I remember early. that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too early to call this a stable solution, you know, back then. But over the last decade, lots of improvements have been made and it has been become a commodity. It's all around us. And when addressing composable as a marketing term, that also has been around us for years. And Adobe, you know, and, and, and at Adobe, we call this modular commerce. But, you know, with microservices, those are pretty new and they will evolve. I'm 100% sure. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, let's get a head start on API first and headless. I would say that's proven technology. And let's not forget about the cloud that has been mainstream already for years. So it looks like, Marion, we are just in the middle. Yeah, too true. Um of course, at the end of the day, what is finally most important to our customers and the customers of the audience here is how this will have an impact on the holy grail of e-commerce. Or in other words, how will it influence that all-important customer experience? Uh, well, user experience is key, of course. At Adobe, we're constantly looking forward to improving that. And with these modern uh, technologies, we define four important pillars. Uh, first of all, performance, uh, flexibility, scalability, and time to market. And this will lead to the best in class solution we Adobe can offer to our clients. Yeah, super. So what we're really saying, if I understand everything you've said and shared so far well, is that if we defined it as true composable, it would mean that as a business owner, I would be replacing different components very quickly. But what we're saying is that really modular is a better term to use because we don't want to replace everything all the time. That just increases expense and effort and so on. We're adding new things and we would like to deploy some elements at a certain moment in time uh, to make an implementation more complex or rather less complex rather than more. And that's why we use it as Adobe, we call it modular comp uh, commerce rather than composable commerce, correct? Marion, 100% correct. Um, well, the modular approach, it's a positive impact of course on total cost of ownership as it means that different modules can be replaced mm -hmm. so the better one be available. But in a case, for instance, as a headless commerce solution, uh, you don't want to replace every front end every few years. So modular commerce um, is a stronger term that describes the business benefits more adequately. Yeah, super, Ray. Thank you so much. This was great. I, it's really clarified things for me again, and I hope it has for the audience as well. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. So. Let me summarize with four key takeaways. Three, well, three takeaways even. <laughs> so, um, I always want more. Composable is good. Modular is actually a more accurate term and we prefer to use that. Key benefits of modular commerce are you know, flex flexibility, extensibility, as Ray said multiple times, faster time to market and lower cost of ownership. So, at the end of the day, we need to advise our customers. We need to talk to our customers in order to advise them on what the best architecture is for their business rather than blatantly just, just go after uh, that composable commerce uh, topic. So again, Ray, thank you so much for talking to me today. And thanks for the audience for listening to the both of us. 
If you do have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat or send them to either Ray or myself. We'll be happy to answer and support you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marianne. Um, thank you so much, Ray and Marion. Um, I have a couple of questions just to wrap this up as well. Um, obviously, it seems like composable com commerce has many benefits for the merchants. And you already mentioned that the time to market is faster. Uh, there are better ways of implementing services using microservices, etc. Ray, question to you. What do you see, what impact does a composable commerce uh, leave for merchants in terms of maintenance. So when you compare uh, classic Magento build, Magento 2 with uh, robust and uh, full infrastructure, everything's connected, composable commerce, how do they compare? Well, I mean, going back, back in the day, you know, designing a front end uh, was pretty intense sometimes, definitely with all the, uh, the modules and the maintenance on that. Now going back to uh, our latest version, 2.4.4, uh, which will have a, a thin, efficient core, uh, as we already shared, you know, out there. Uh, using that uh, will definitely drive flexibility, not only on patches, but also on performance. So we have quicker uh, time to improve uh, instead of those those larger releases that we use to support, of course. So clients can definitely support much quicker, where uh, from a front-end perspective, um, the front-end engineers can really fully focus flexible on, for instance, the headless PWS Studio or whatever spoke or third-party uh, headless solution is out there. And having that, that composable commerce, for instance, and, and let me go a little bit deep on, on the latest, actually the the Catalog functionality, as I just mentioned, um, we just uh, received internally um, a request to apply and onboard some new partners as well. So eventually, uh, quicker than, than, than expected, we are able to start supporting that. So replacing that functionality from a maintenance perspective, answering a question, it will be much quicker, much faster, much, much more efficient. So the backend team will focus to summarize on the backend, uh, that will install all the patches needed to support 2.4.4. Uh, you can add this particular catalog function by click of a button pretty soon, and the front end guys can support the front end. So we don't need to wait on each other anymore, where efficiency, efficiency will reduce, of course, uh, what's, what's pretty needed there. All right, great, thank you. And another question. Uh, as for example, for me as a merchant ready to jump in the boat and start trucking with composable commerce, what is my first step? Well, first of all, um, I would say, you know, get a, an Adobe Commerce license uh, on cloud because that really helps to rock the boat and to kick off really smoothly. Uh, having that in place, uh, of course, a really uh, good relationship with a partner, that's key because based on the requirements and uh, that partner specifically can, can translate all the specific business needs. Now, based on that, I would say having the headless cloud and, and um, API uh, combination already ready to go, that will definitely help uh, to speed up. So you're saying the first, uh, so from the development perspective, the first thing to do is uh, once we are on cloud, once we are on MRF, uh, the first step is to get a PWA or a headless commerce enabled. And that's really the very start of it. Yeah. I mean, right now, from a deployment perspective, it's possible to get a ready-to-go environment up and running within two weeks or even less now. Uh, so that will definitely speed up, uh, I would say, getting uh, the solid Magento backend hosted on the Magento, uh, sorry, on the Adobe Commerce Cloud and having that served throughout a PAWA frontend layer. And of course, I would, I, would, I would add to that uh, coming from my, my level of expertise or my area of expertise that you need a really good commerce strategy. Know what you want at the end of the day so that we can help uh, design the best architecture and future proof against that, uh, that vision that you have as a merchant. Thanks, Marion. I fully support that. <laughs> Thank <All right>. you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comments and thank you for sharing all of the knowledge. It's been extremely valuable. Uh, I appreciate that and uh, thank you for joining. Thank you.